Hi, I'm Alice Wood and I'm a publisher within the Open Research team at Wiley. Here is a presentation about sharing data that was given as part of a series of open research workshops in 2020 to several UK universities in partnership with the UK Reproducibility Network. I'm going to talk to you today about sharing data. What are the reasons to share data and what do funders, publishers, institutions and researchers think about research data and sharing it? Initiatives like fair sharing will help make sure that their data is shared in a way that benefits all. And for journals and institutions, data availability statements will become standard. Before we begin, let's take a look at a quick definition. I've taken this one from the University of Leeds Research Data Management site. Data is any information that has been collected, observed, generated or created to validate original research findings. Often but not always digital, it can take many forms, which will vary by discipline. Have you shared your research data publicly? Where and why? This is Jean-Claude Bergerman. Until last year, he led open science and data policy at the European Commission's Directorate General for Research and Innovation. As you can see, he views open data as one of the most important parts of open science. Data that is shared, makes the most of public investment in the production of research data, facilitates reuse and the enrichment of data sets. From a transparency and integrity point of view, it enables the detection of false claims and inaccuracies and allows for replicability tests. And finally, it gives credit to data creators, increasing their citation rate and therefore their research impact. He attended a symposium that we organised for our journal editors last year to talk about mandates coming from the European Commission on Data Sharing and was extremely keen to talk to editors in disciplines within the social sciences and humanities, where we don't typically think of data to highlight their responsibility in this area too. As I mentioned earlier, so much falls under this umbrella term of data. Last year, we published the latest results of our open research survey, to which we received over 2,600 responses from all regions and all subject disciplines. The top motivations given for data sharing were public benefit, transparency and reuse, and the increased visibility of research. When we did this survey in 2016, just 35% of respondents said they were motivated by public benefit, compared to 64% this time round. There are, of course, also those who are hesitant to share their research data, and you can see the top reasons here around intellectual property or confidentiality issues, ethical concerns, concerns about misrepresentation or misuse, and worries about research being scooped. Finally, we asked the researchers where they share their data. The highest was a supplementary material in a journal, but we also see data sharing in various types of repositories. Earlier, I mentioned FAIR sharing. FAIR stands for findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. Curation work is needed in order for shared data to be useful. FAIRsharing.org is a curated resource on data and metadata standards, databases and policies. The reason we love FAIR sharing is because it helps researchers get the fundamentals of preparing to share data including metadata via community standards and access and sharing via community repositories. Lambert Heller, leader of the Open Science Lab at the journal German National Library of Science and Technology agrees. The true benefit of FAIR is in providing a framework for researchers to manage their own data for themselves. He describes data as a love letter to your future self. Many other useful resources exist too. For example, DMP Online helps you to create, review and share data management plans that meet institutional and funder requirements. It's provided by the Digital Curation Centre. FAIR helps us make our data as useful as possible. And Kate LeMay here from the Australian Research Data Commons describes why that's good for you. As LeMay argues, there are both altruistic and selfish reasons for the researchers to take the next step and make their data fair. Most people get into research because they want to make a difference, she says. That includes making your data as useful as possible. Fair can also be good for career advancement, particularly for early, early career researchers. Fair helps you demonstrate the impact of your research when people reuse and cite your data set, LeMay says. It gets your name out there and can lead to new collaborations. 
A really good mantra to bear in mind is that research data should be as open as possible and as closed as necessary. Open in order to foster reusability and accelerate research. But at the same time, there are occasions where they should be closed to safeguard the privacy of subjects, for example. I think this helps to answer one of the top reasons that came up in our survey for being hesitant to share data, which was confidentiality. Many scientific journals and research funders now require scientists to share their data openly. Nature, for example, recently endorsed the Enabling Fair Data Initiative, which requires authors in the earth, space and environmental sciences to share their data on community repositories where available. The American Chemical Society author guidelines state that supplementary information submitted with the manuscript will be automatically hosted on Figshare to promote open data discoverability and use of your research output. At Wiley, we have a policy ladder across our journals for data sharing, which you can see here. The first policy, called Encourages, has no particular requirements. The second policy, called Expects, requires only a data availability statement. It does not require that the data have been shared. The third policy, called Mandates, requires a data availability statement and requires data have been shared. And we have a fourth policy that adds peer review to that. The take home message is that journals will increasingly ask you for a data availability statement. Over the last 18 months, we've introduced this requirement for a data availability statement on over 700 journals and we're still adding more. So what does a data availability statement look like? Here's an example in one of our journals where the data have been shared in the Dryad repository. It's available outside of the main body of the article and therefore available to all, even if the article itself is behind a paywall. Here are some more examples of different ways in which data can be shared and how that can be reflected in a data availability statement. Take a moment to digest these a little. Do any of them look familiar? So what do you think about sharing data? If you'd like to know more, please take a look at the UKRN data sharing primer or the data sharing resources that we have on the Wiley website.